Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gabe and I'm a registered nurse in the DOV degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you are already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please make sure to subscribe now. You hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really help me know that you like to see more contents like this. Without further ado, you guys, let's jump into the video. Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good night just in case I don't get to see you. Isang panibagong nursing class discussion nga ang ko sa inyo for today. And like you see on your screen, today is all about nursing test banking. This is about care of clients with physiologic and psychosocial alterations. Um, coverage ng yung PNL E4. Yes, ngayon, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung other nursing test banking video I created under my channel, I'll be putting the actual playlist link on the description box or whenever the icon button pops out, click the one out because I'll be putting it there together with the other playlist I have on my channel. Now, before I further proceed, I would just like to really grab this opportunity to thank you who's listening right now, thank you who's watching right now, and coming up to class. Sa mga bago nating subscribers dyan, maraming maraming salamat po sa um, nakakatuwa at nakakataba ng puso yung mga comments nyo at yung mga pag email nyo sa akin showing your appreciation and love for the channel. Maraming maraming salamat po sa mga datihan na, sa mga old students ko dyan. Ako, you guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. I just can't say anything. Uh, like words cannot, cannot express how much thankful I am to all of you guys. Ngayon, um, yeah, we're moving towards our uh, goal for uh, 20k subscribers, and I know that none of n- nothing is impossible with you guys. Keep on sharing, subscribing, following, and liking the videos I created because um, you know spreading the news about the channel because it's only you who can do that. You know, so that more people will be aware about uh, the intention and the mission of this channel, which is really to help all the nursing students and professionals with their nursing life and nursing career and nursing studies. You know, um, there's there's really a lot of concept in nursing, and this is my way of giving back to my community and also connecting with you guys. Um, in my own little way, I want to be able to make your life easier and um that is, you know, by helping you with your studies. A lot of concepts in nursing and a lot of times you might forget them. So let this let this channel be your um, number one ultimate go-to channel on YouTube, online channel, online channel, like online source of nursing information, facts, and updates. Okay? So yeah. Um, dami ko masyadong sinasabi. Ito na talaga. Friday ngayon. So, bago tayo mag-celebrate ng weekends, uh, kung saan ang mga ganap nyo, aba, e mag-aral muna tayo. Sagutin muna natin tong mga posibleng tanong na maaring lumabas ngayong darating na board exam. Sa lahat naman ng mga no, passers natin jan congratulations sa inyo. Marami nga sa inyo bumabalik at nagpapasalamat uh, sa channel ko, sa akin, dahil karamihan ng mga nilalabas ko dito sa Nursing Chess Banking, ina-i-encounter nila sa actual board exam. Malay mo, this next 10 questions that we're gonna have today is the next 10 questions that you will answer on your board exam. O, di ba? O, di may tama ka ng sampu agad. Pero, um, I just really want to know and evaluate the scores of my students. So, please, please put them down on the comment section below. Alright? So, let's proceed with the objectives for today's discussion. All right, so I'm, I am going to provide and discuss the board exam type of questions, and then I'm going to provide rationalization for each board exam type of question. And please note, if there's anything that I want you to take away out from this video or for any nursing test banking videos I created, that is the rationalization. Para kahit pa ikutikutin ka sa araw ng boards, ibahin yung structure ng tanong, yung structure, yung, yung multiple choices, 
you exactly know why is that the right answer because you know by heart the reason why that is the right answer. And I also want you to take note of how I attack and approach certain questions, how my test taking strategies as I go along and give you the answer and, um, you know, read to you the questions. All right. Okay. Okay. Let me share to you the instructions for our today's exam. You'll be given 10 board exam type of questions. I'll be reading the questions and the choices for you. You have five seconds to answer each question. The answer is revealed instantly after each question with rationalization. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Good luck, nurses. Here's the mindset. Here's the scenario. Let's say that this is the last 10 questions of the board. How well you want yourself to perform? Take this one seriously, grab your pen and paper, and we're going to be starting in a minute. But before that, before I continue with the test, baka naman hindi ka pa nagsasubscribe, magsubscribe ka na go. Thank you so much for doing that. Subscribe and hit the notif bell para naman aware ka agad. Agad-agad nag-notify sa'yo pag nag-upload ako three times a week ang class natin, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Let me read to you the question. Very first question of the day, board exam type of question number one. A male client has a jugular distension. On what position, on what position should the nurse place the head? of the bed to obtain the most accurate reading of jugular vein distension. Tinatanong ka, client positioning. Ang procedure mo, jugular vein distension, reading. Paano mo daw ipoposition ang kliyente mo kapag you wanna obtain an accurate reading of your jugular vein distension? Distended neck veins. Is it A, high fallers? Is it B, raised 10 degrees? Is it C, raised 30 degrees or D supine position. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, nurses. What is your answer? Very good. The answer is letter C. Raise 30 degrees. Here's the reason why. Jugular venous pressure is measured with a centimeter ruler to obtain the vertical distance between the sternal angle and the point of highest pulsation with the head of the bed inclined between 15 to 30 degrees. Increased pressure can be seen when the client is supine or when the head of the bed is raised 10 degrees because the point that marks the pressure level is above the jaw, therefore not visible. In high Fowler's position though, the veins would be barely discernible above the clavicle. All right, so the answer is letter C. Question number two. The nurse is aware that one of the following classes of medications maximizes cardiac performance in clients with heart failure by increasing ventricular contractility. Tinatanong ka, alin sa mga medications na ito ang may hindi ang, tag dito ang merong, what's this? Uh, mode of action. O yung kanyang mechanism of action is... Uh, increasing ventricular contractility. It increases ventricular contractility. That is the question. Is it a beta adrenergic blockers? Is it C calcium channel blocker or D or C diuretics or D inotropic agents? Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good sa mga nakatama. Kung nakatama ka dito, malamang sa alamang, ay napanood mo yung um, very recent upload ko about sa Levofed. Yan. Nag-upload ako ng nursing drug study about Levofed. Kung di po pa napapanood yun, panoorin mo nandiyan yun sa playlist ng Nursing Pharmacology. Letter D is the right answer. Here's the reason why. Inotropic agents. Now, inotrope agents are administered to increase the force of the heart's contractions, thereby increasing ventricular contractility and ultimately increasing cardiac output. Beta adrenergic blockers and calcium channel blockers decrease the heart rate and ultimately decrease the workload of the heart. Diuretics are administered to decrease the overall vascular volume, also decreasing the workload of the heart. Hence, the answer is letter D. Malina ba yon? Malina. Board exam type of question number three. 
A male client has a reduced serum high-density lipoprotein HDL level and an elevated low-density lipoprotein, yung tinatawag natin LDL level. That's your situation. Here is the question. Which of the following dietary modification is not appropriate for this client? Kapag tinatanong ka, kapag um, uh, mababa ang HDL at mataas naman ang LDL level, serum level ha, ng pasyente mo, anong recommended diet? That is the question. To. Kita nyo? Very good. Is it a fiber intake of 25 to 30 degree? Ay, ano daw? Fiber intake of 25 to 30 grams daily. Degree? B, less than 30% of calories form fats. C, cholesterol intake of less than 300 milligram daily. Or C, less than 1%. Uh, less than 10% of the calories from saturated fat. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. Let me just change my position. What is your answer? Uh, okay, what is the answer to this one? Sabay sabay tayo. Letter B is the right answer. Very good. Less than 30% of, ca- of calories form fat. Here's why. Pakinig na maigi ha sa rationalization. Okay, masyadong ano dyan. Mamaro dyan. Charing. Eto na. Letter B is the right answer. Why? A client with low serum HDL and high serum LDL levels should get less than 30% of the daily calories from fats. The other modifications are appropriate for this client. That's why the answer is letter B. Question number four. A 37-year-old male client was admitted to the coronary care unit, CCU, two days ago with an acute myocardial infarction. A case of MI. MI ang kaso, 37 years old male. That's the situation. Nagets, itong tanong. Which of the following actions would breach the client confidentiality? Ang tanong, binigyan ka lang ng ano, very nakakakaba. Eh, may hala, ano na to? Gano'n na. Pero huwag ka masyadong kabahan. Kasi ang tanong lang naman dito, sa mga nagtatrabaho dyan sa US, alam yung HIPAA. Right? Uh, ba diba? Client confidentiality. That is the question actually. So you can expect that on the following scenarios, alin din daw dito ang magpapakita na nag-breach ang confidentiality ng kliyente mo. Yun ang tanong. Kahit na binigyan ka ng sitwasyon na pang MI, hindi mo kailangan magkaroon ng ideas sa MI. Kailangan mo ng common sense about client confidentiality. Nurse jurisprudence. Makinig kayo dyan. Ito na. Is it A, the CCU nurse gives a verbal report to the nurse on the telemetry unit before transferring the client to that unit? Is it B, the CCU nurse notifies the on-call physician about the change in the client's condition? C, the emergency department nurse calls up the latest electrocardiogram results to check the client's progress? D, at the client's request, the CCU nurse updates the client's wife on his condition. I'm gonna give you five seconds and it starts right now. Time is up, you guys. What is your answer? Nako, this is uh, pretty interesting. The answer is letter C. The emergency department nurse calls up the latest electrocardiogram results to check the client's progress. Ito. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit. The emergency department nurse is no longer directly involved with the client's care and thus has and thus has no legal right to information about his present condition. Anyone directly involved in his care, such as the telemetry nurse and the on-call physician, has the right to information about his condition. Because the client requested that the nurse update his wife on his condition, doing so doesn't breach confidentiality. Period. Ano nga naman kasi ang ginagawa ng ER nurse tapos nang, i- nang nakikimarite sa CCU? Gets mo? Oh, yun yun. Proceed na tayo. Question number five na... Ang init ang ulo ko for today. Char! Joke lang. Question number five. A male client arriving in the emergency department is receiving cardiopulmonary resuscitation from paramedics who are giving ventilations through endotracheal tube, ET tube, that they place in the client's home during a 
costs in compressions, the cardiac monitor shows narrow QRS complexes and a heart rate of beats per minute with palpable pulse. Which of the following action should a nurse take first? Ang sitwasyon mo, meron kang narrow QRS complexes and heart rate of beats per minute with palpable pulse during pause sa compression. Malinaw, arrest ang pasyente mo. Naka-80. So, ano daw ang gagawin ng alin sa mga actions na to would be your highest priority. Unang-una mong gagawin. Is it a start an LV line and administer amiodarone, cardarone, 300mg LV over uh, 10 minutes? B. Check endotracheal tube placement. C. Obtain an arterial blood gas ABG sample. Or D. Administer atropine 1mg LV. Your 5 seconds starts now. Sige nga, subukan natin yung mga nasa ACLS dyan. Time is up. Kung masyado mabilis naman yung ating ano, ating 5 seconds, pwede mo namang i-pause. Hindi naman ako magagalit. Okay? Ngayon, bago ko sa'yo sabihin yung tamang sagot at eh, paliwanag sa'yo kung bakit yun ang tamang sagot, baka naman hindi ka pa nagsasubscribe at mag-notify bell ka na. Hit mo na yung dalawang yun. Mabilis lang. Bigyan ka ng time. Go! Ganawa mo ba? Oo. Oh. Jesus see who does not pay. Charing. Di ba sa mga ano yun? Sa may mga sa siya jeep. Charing. <laughs> Eto na. Ang tamang sagot po sa, uh, sa answer na to, question number five is, alam ko this is quite a difficult question. Don't, don't worry, I got you girl. Letter B is the right answer. Check endotracheal tube placement. Here's why. ET tube, repl- uh, ET tube placement should be confirmed as soon as the client arrives in the emergency department. Once the airway is secured, oxygenation and ventilation should be confirmed using an end, um, end tidal carbon dioxide monitor and pulse oximeter. Next, the nurse should make sure LV access is established. If the client experiences symptomatic bradycardia, atropine is administered as ordered 0.5, naalala pa yung dose, to 1 mg every 3 to 5 minutes to a total dose of 3 mg. Naalala yung ACLS algorithm, ito yon. Then the nurse should try to find the cause of the client's arrest by obtaining ABG sample. Niro-roll out na natin, tama? Mm. Amiodarone is indicated for ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, and atrial flutter, not symptomatic bradycardia. Saan pa indicated? Ang iyong amiodarone, di ba binibigay ito sa mga tinatawag na, ano yung tawag natin sa ACLS? Um... Uh, Recurrent V-fib, tama, kapag nakakadalawang dose na tayo, refractory V-fib, refractory V-tac, naalala, mm. kapag stubborn, hindi na ako correct to reset, pag nakakadalawang dose na tayo ng epi, tapos same ang reading mo, yun, pinagbibigay tayo ng amiodarone. Alright, so the answer to this is letter B. Next, question number six. After cardiac surgery, a client's blood pressure measures 126 per over 80 milligrams of uh, millimeters of mercury. Nurse Katrina determines that mean arterial pressure or MAP is which of the following? Computation ng MAP. MAP. Alin daw dito? Kung ito ang BP reading mo, magkano ang map mo? That is the question. So, dapat dito, computation. Ako, ang dami pa naman mga ano, mga, mga jubobo sa mat sa atin. Huwag kayo mag-alala. Huwag kayo mag-alala. Madali lang naman ito. So, kailangan alam mo yung computation, yung formula of how to compute your map. MAP. So, the answer, kapag alam mo yon, masasagutan mo to. So, bigay ko sa yung choices, possible answers. A, 46 millimeters of mer- mercury. B, 80 millimeters of mercury. C, 95. Or D, 90. Your five seconds starts now. O, ba Kung hindi mo naman alam yung formula, nandyan na nga po sa harap mo. Kaya kung nga siya nilagay dyan para makatulong sa'yo. Especially doon sa ating mga visual learners. Ito yung formula ha. So kung ginamit mo yung formula na nasa harapan mo, masasagutan mo to. The answer is very good. 
95 millimeters of mercury letter C. Now, uh, use the following formula to calculate your MAP, your MAP. MAP is equals to systolic plus 2, um, open and close parenthesis, your diastolic, divided by 3. So that's 126 millimeters of mercury plus 2 times your 80 milligrams of mercury divided by 3. So that what well, that will be equal to MAP is equal to 286 millimeters of mercury divided by 3. Tama? So if you're going to do the 286 divided by 3, that is equal to 95. Malino ba yun? Malino. Oh, huwag magalala. Balik-balikan mo lang kung nahirapan ka. It takes practice. Huwag ka magalala. May formula naman. So, hindi ka maliligaw. Eto na tayo. Board exam. Top of question number 7. A female client arrives at the emergency department which, uh, with chest pain and stomach pain in a report of black tarry stool for several months. Anong kaso? Melena. Gets? Which of the following orders should the nurse Oliver anticipate? Ano ang mga ino-order ng doktor kapag ang pasyente ay may melena? Ano ba yung rule out? So you can expect certain laboratories. Ano daw yun? Ina-anticipate mo. Is it a cardiac monitor, oxygen, creatinine, kinase, and lactate dehydrogenase levels? B. Protombin time, PT, PTT, INR, fibrinogen, and fibrins. Uh, split uh, product values yung inyong coagulation profile. C. Electrocardiogram, complete blood count, testing for occult blood and comprehensive serum, metabolic panel. D. Electroencephalogram, alkaline phosphatase, and aspartate, amino transferase levels, basic serum, metabolic panel. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up. What is the answer? Nurse says, very good letter C. I'll tell you why. Letter C is the right answer. Electrocardiogram, complete blood count, testing for occult blood, comprehensive serum, metabolic panel. An electrocardiogram evaluates the complaints of chest pain. La uh, elaborated test determines anemia. And the stool test for occult blood determines blood in the stool. Cardiac monitoring, oxygen, and creatinine kinase and lactate dehydrogenase levels are appropriate for a cardiac primary problem. A basic metabolic panel and alkaline phosphatase and aspartate amino transferase levels assess liver function. Protombin time, partial thrombus thromboplastin time, fibrinogen, and fibrin split products are measured to verify bleeding discretious. An electrocardioencephalogram evaluates brain electrical activity. Hence, the answer is letter C. Alright? Eto na tayo. Bago ko i-review, last three questions na nga tayo. Kumusta kayo dyan? Kumusta ang mga lagay ng scores nyo? Lagay mo scores mo sa baba. Huwag mahihiya. Pinaghirapan mo yan. Again, the goal of this... Um, Test is not for you to get a perfect score. Not yet. Darating tayo dyan. But I just want you to get the gist on the rationalization, the test-taking strategies, all of that. Okay? So put your scores in the comment section below. Now, bago ko sabihin sa inyo, yung question number 8, aba naman, mag-subscribe ka na, natutuyo na yung laway ko dito. Go! Thank you so much. Oh, ready ka na? Eto na. Question number 8. Macario had a coronary artery bypass graft surgery 3 days ago. Cabbage. Which of the following condition is suspected by the nurse when a decrease in platelet count from 230,000 UL to 5,000 UL is noted? So, may decrease daw ng ang pasyente mo post cabbage 3 days ago. Tinignan yung platelet count. Nakita from a baseline of 230,000, naging 5,000 UL na lang. Anong gagawin mo? Ano yung condition na to? Anong, ano yung pwede mong i-rule out sa pasyente mo kapag ganito yung platelet count mo? Post-cabbage. Is it A, pancytopenia? Is it B, idiopathic thrombocytopenia? Purpura yung ayong ITP? C, disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC, or... 
di heparin associated thrombosis and thrombocytopenia yung HATS. Okay, five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is your answer? Le- very good letter D. Heparin associated thrombosis and thrombocytopenia. Hat. Makinig na mabuti, ha? Hat may occur after cabbage surgery due to heparin use during surgery. Although DIC and ITP cause platelet aggregation and bleeding, neither is common in a client after revascularization surgery. Pancytopenia is a reduction in all blood cells. Malina ba yon? Malina. Proceed na tayo. Board exam sa question number 9. Which of the following drugs would be ordered by the physician to improve the platelet count in a male client with idiopathic thrombocytopenia at thrombocytopenic purpura? Anong gamot ang, i- uh, ang i-order ng doktor to improve ITP sa isang lalaking pasyente? Is it A, aspirin? Acetils, uh, acetyl, uh, ace, acetyl salicylic acid. Hindi ko mabasa. Aspirin lang siya alam ko. Uh, B. Corticosteroids. C. Methotrexate. Or D. Vitamin K. Your five seconds starts now. All right, what is the answer? Very good. The answer is letter. I-reveal ko na ang tamang sagot. Letter B, corticosteroids. Why? Corticosteroids therapy can decrease antibody uh, production and phagocytosis of the antibody-coated platelets, retaining more functioning platelets. Methotrexate can cause thrombocytopenia. Vitamin K is used to treat an excessive anticoagulated state from warfarin overload and aspirin decreases platelet aggregation. The answer is letter B. Now, before we further proceed with the last question of the day, um, if you make it this far, give this naman a big thumbs up. Ito naman. I'll go. Question number 10. Make this one count. A female client is scheduled to receive a heart valve replacement with porcine valve. Which of the following t- types of transplant is this? Kapag daw ang ginagamit is porcine valve. Okay. What type of transplant is this? Is it allo- uh, allogenic? Is it biotologous? C, syn, uh, syngenic, or D, synogenic. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good. Synogenic, letter D. And synogenic transplant is between, um, is between human and another species. Sin, uh, syngenic, or yung tinatawag itong letter C, this transplant is between identical twins. Allogenic transplant is between two humans. And autologous is a transplant from the same individual. Hence, the answer is letter D. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. I hope you learned something. Kamusta ang mga scores nyo? Ilagay sa baba. Let me know. Please like nga pala and share. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. You let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do. Comment it down below. Abangan mo yung upload natin next week because that's going to be another three sets of videos for uh, three sets of classroom discussion. O, di ba? Ang saya. Tulungan nyo na nga ako. Pamalitan nyo na sa Radyo Sira. Pinakabago, pinakafresh, pinakalibreng nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. And I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Just in case nobody told you this. Yet, I love you and I'm proud of you. Go get yourself some good burger and good drink this weekend. Have a great one.